Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. <laughs> We're having fun here this morning. Amen. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, the Bible says. Amen. Amen. And how many of you need some medicine right about now? <laughs> a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. This morning, uh, take your Bibles, please, and uh, if, if you are able, please stand, and we're going to read in John chapter 8, John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. Please rise if you are able. If not, that is fine. As we read John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32 is our springboard text this morning. Then Jesus said, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your goodness to us this morning. We thank you for your grace, unbounded, your love, unmatched. Oh, thank you so, Lord, for the goodness that you show us all the time. Oh, Father, we don't deserve it. We thank you for your grace, your love, your mercy. We thank you for this beautiful sanctuary in which to gather together to sing your praises, to lift up your most holy name, to have sweet fellowship and to hear your word. I thank you, Lord, for that. And I ask that you please be with us as we read and hear your word this morning. Father, we need to be encouraged. And Lord, I know that I cannot do that. And I ask that you would, by your precious Holy Spirit, please be with us this morning in a special way. O oh, Father in heaven, give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you are saying this morning. We don't need to hear from Pastor Kimball. We need to hear from you. So please, in Jesus' name, speak to us this morning. Amen. And amen. All right, you may be seated. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. A disciple is a student, a follower, someone who is in training, someone who is learning to be like the master. If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We need to be freed as a people this morning. We need to be free. We've been studying the plagues of Egypt on our Wednesday, in our Wednesday night Bible study. And uh, the whole study about the plagues of Egypt tells us about a tyrannical ruler who would not let God's people go. And we find ourselves basically, I think, in, in a very similar situation, if not the same situation. Tyrannical world leaders have God's people in bondage. And, and I tell you what, a lot of the people don't even know they're in bondage. They don't even know it. They walk around and you can tell they're in bondage just by looking at them. You know what I mean. You can tell they're in bondage just by looking at them. And God's people, God designed his people, God meant for his people to be free. God meant for his people to be free. I know that God's people at that time 
during the plagues of Egypt. I know they were in the situation that they were in because of their own sin. And I know that we as a people are in the situation that we are in because of our sin. Make no mistake about that. We deserve it. But God's people in that day cried out to him and he heard them. You see, if we would just cry out to God, he would hear us. He will hear us. Our people had come to the place where we're tired of this, Lord. And, we, and I think that they realized why they were in the place they were in. And they cried out to God, God, help us. Help us. We are in bondage. Oh, God, we are in bondage. Help us, please. Lord, help us. And our cries reached to heaven. And he sent Moses and Aaron to Pharaoh. To tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Over and over. You see, this was what the plagues of Egypt were all about. One after the other, Pharaoh would act like he was going to let us go, and then he wouldn't. Now, sometimes it says that Pharaoh hardened his heart, and then other times it said God hardened Pharaoh's heart. It was all a part of God's plan. But my prayer, my desire is that at this time, at this point in time, that God's people would realize our sin has got us in a situation similar to that time back then. Amen. We are in bondage. We are. We are in bondage. And I pray that God will hear the cries of his people. And that he will send people to these world leaders to say, let my people go. Let them go. They're not your people. They're my people. For many months now, it seems like we've been living in a foreign land. We've ceased being America and have become something foreign. America... The word America literally means kingdom of heaven. Kingdom of heaven. That's what America means. Now where this appellation may have fitly described us in our history, it no longer does. The enemies of this country flourish and have their way because the stern and passion stress of our forefathers has devolved into cowardice. Among the most tragic things to have happened in the past few months is the way so many churches just shut their doors, shut their doors without the slightest protest. They just shut them. Shame. Yes, shame is right. We were talking to, Brother Art and I went to uh, a place earlier this week. There was a woman there and she was, talking about, we were talking about all that was going on right now in the country, and she said, listen, she says, I'm not really a church goer, but to me, one of the saddest things that happened, didn't she say this, was that the churches, and it, she, she said it made her angry, yes. that the churches shut their doors. Yes. Just shut them. That's the, the kind of day we're living in, folks. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and home of the brave? No. No, it does not. The flag is still there, but it now waves o'er the land of the enslaved and the home of the fearful. Well, this morning, I want to encourage your heart and give you hope. Amen? Would you like that? And I want to lift up and exalt the Lord Jesus Christ because he said that if he be lifted up, he will draw all men to himself. And that's what we need. That is what we need. Our Lord said, I'll read it again. If ye continue in my word, this is in John chapter 8, verse 31 and 32, our, our springboard text for this morning. 
If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So may I present to you this morning some truth. Amen? You want to hear some truth this morning? Amen. Come on now. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, is a scripture that I want you to memorize. I want you to learn it. I want you to recite it. I want you to think it. I want you to tell others about it. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. Can I get an amen there? Amen. The Lord hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. If you watch the lamestream media. All you're going to get is fear, fear, fear. Oh, there's another outbreak. Oh, there's more that have protested positive. Riots. It's all fear. Constantly. Fear, fear, fear. And deception. The Lord hath not given us, though, the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God's people need to stop listening to the fear and start focusing on him. Yes. He has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And I tell you, I can't believe the number of people today that still believe that this is all about public health. You hearing me? This is not about public health. This is about power. This is about control. Controlling God's people, keeping God's people in bondage. There were governors, I think of the one in California in particular, who said, okay, you may go. It's not up to him, folks. There is a wall of separation between church and state. This is well established. A wall of separation. The state has no jurisdiction over churches. But the governor of California felt like he did. So he said, you can go back to church after weeks. I mean weeks of not going to church. You may go back to church, but you have to stay six feet apart. You have to wear a mask. You cannot sing praises to God. And you can only have so many. All these rules. All these rules. Oh, but if it's a BLM rally, oh, that's okay. Come on out. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We need not, yea, we must not be fearful in these dark and evil days, but be strong and courageous Trusting in the God of our fathers, come what may. Are you hearing me? Come what may. Amen. Amen. I do not know how far gone we are actually in the spirit. But I also know that I think things are going to get worse before they get better. Are you ready for it? Are you prepared? Are you prepared? Amen. Think about it. Are you? The Lord hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love, and of a sound mind. Now, we're not going to believe all the lies anymore, are we? No. Not going to believe the lies any longer. No, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6 says, Be strong and of a good courage. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. You know who they are. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, 
nor forsake thee. Is that comforting? Come on, are you with me this morning? I'm speaking truth this morning. And when we know the truth, the truth is going to set us free. It's going to set us free. Jesus said it, and I believe it. That's just how it is. The truth sets his people free. So when we know the truth, and that is that God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, that's how it is. That's the truth. And that's going to set us free. That's going to set us free. You you cannot be free otherwise. You listen to the lamestream media, you're not going to be free. You listen to all the naysayers, all those around you that are saying, oh, millions are going to die if we don't do this, 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 and this. So they shackle us. They shackle us. Stay in your homes. Stay safe. Keep, save lives. The Lord hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. I say it over and over, and I want you to start saying it over and over until you get it. He hath not given, he hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That's the truth. And that truth will set you free if you grab hold of it. Amen. Amen. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. That will set you free. That will set you free. If you grab a hold of that and you know he's with you, he's with you. That will set you free. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 to 3. Isaiah 43, verses 1 to 3. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. He's talking to us. Fear not. Fear not. For I have redeemed thee. I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou wilt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. That'll set you free right there, folks. That'll set you free. Amen. Amen. When you pass through the waters, He'll be with you. Through the rivers, they're not going to overflow you. And when you walk through fire, you're not going to be burned. I want you to just take note of this. We will we'll walk through water and river and fire. We'll go through all of it. But he's with us. Amen. So we'll be okay. Doesn't say you won't ever have any trouble. Just says, I am with you. Amen. I'm with you. Yes. Be courageous. Be strong. I, I am with you. Hear me, God's people. He's with you. If you're standing for what is right and you're keeping his word and you have a repentant attitude, a humble spirit, he's with you. Doesn't matter what they do to you. He's with you. Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17 The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Hallelujah. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. 
Oh, the enemy, they're, they're flexing their muscles. They're saying, hey, we got you. We're in control. You do as we say or else. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Amen. No one can stand against him. No one. Your arms are too short to box with God. In Genesis chapter 18, verse 14, the question is asked, Is anything too hard for the Lord? In Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27, God himself says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? He wants us to think, is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too hard for him? No. Think about it. Is there anything too hard for him? No. Now let's see. He created the world, the whole universe, with his word. He calmed a raging storm with a word. He said, peace, be still. And a raging storm turned into a glassy sea. Is anything too hard for our God? No. Think about it. No! Nothing, nothing is too hard for him. The answer is clear. Luke 1, 37, with God, nothing shall be impossible. That's the truth. And that'll set you free, my friends. Come on now. In Christ, nothing is impossible for us. Nothing is impossible with God. And if we're in him, nothing's impossible for us. Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ. Not in my flesh, but through Christ, I can do all things because Christ gives me the strength. Amen. We can face this storm, what's left of it. I hope it's not much left of it, but I don't know. It depends on God's people. Are you hearing me? It doesn't depend on the government. It really doesn't. It depends on God's people. Amen. President, vice president, governors, mayors. doesn't depend on them at all. Not, not at all. It depends on what God's people will do. Amen. Ever since this planned pandemic began, this has become another country. People are wearing masks everywhere they go just because the tyrants in charge are telling them to. Where are the Shadrachs, Meshachs, and Abednegoes? Where are they? Where are the Daniels? Where are the people of God that will say, I'm not going to bow. I'm not going to bow. I'm not talking about rebellion here. But remember, one of the founding fathers, Benjamin Franklin, I think, came up with this, and it was considered as one of the motto, as, as the motto, to be the motto of our great land. We chose in God we trust, and I'm glad we did. But one that was up for consideration is rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. And it showed Moses and his arm, I mean, not, not, Pharaoh and his army being drowned in the Red Sea. That was going to be, that was one of the mottos that was being considered. Where are the Shadrachs, Meshach, and Abednego? You know, they wouldn't bow. Daniel said, I'm not going to bow to your pagan idols. I'm not going to bow to this. You know, there are, there's satanic worship that involves masks. There are certain forms of satanic worship that involve using masks. Why would we want to cover our faces? Why does everyone need to cover their face? Why is it okay if I'm sitting at a table in a restaurant to not have a mask on, but walking from here 10 feet over there, somebody might die? Does that make any sense? No. None. Where are the Shadrachs, Meshachs, and Abednegoes? Where are the Daniels that will say no? 
not going to bow. Church is not meeting. And those that are meeting seem to have a lot of new rules. I have a friend in San Antonio. She tells me about the church that she goes to. And it's really very sad that they're, they're meeting, but they all have masks on and nobody's singing. And I mean, what's the point? So a lot of people have just stopped going to church. Why not? Why go to church? When you feel like you're in prison, why go to a restaurant if you're waited on by an astronaut? Are you hearing me? Yes. There was a homeschooling father. I saw a video of him just last night. There's this movement now to defund the police. Can you imagine that? Defund the police. They want anarchy. Because that's what you'll get if there's no police. Well, this guy was having trouble. He said, my church won't let us meet with the, they had a homeschooling group that was going to be meeting in the church fellowship hall. Had been meeting in the church fellowship hall. No longer. No, can't do that anymore. Somebody made a phone call, an anonymous phone call. So all of a sudden, can't do that anymore. Can't sing, can't do this, can't do that. And he said, well, I'm just going to defund my church. Well, you know, God's word says to give to his work. And it's a joy and a delight for the real Christian to give to God's work. Amen? Amen? I don't know if I completely agree with that, but he's defunding his church. And let me tell you why I think that that's probably okay. Because that church is not truly the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That church is an extension of the government, in my opinion. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ, that's the kind of church you should support. One that preaches God's word. And let me make it clear. I don't think that I'm anything special. Okay? I'm not exalting myself. I know I'm nothing. You don't even know how nothing I am. And that's the truth. But God's people need to wake up and stop supporting something that is not doing the work of God, but is doing the work of the government. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. I want the camera to hear these amens. Amen. Wake up, everybody. John chapter 8, verse 32, I'll read it again. Ye shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free. Amen. The truth will make you free. The truth is we're not their people. We're God's people. Amen? We're God's people. And we say to the people in charge that think that they can keep God's people under their thumb, we say, let my people go. Amen. Let us go. We will not bow. We will serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that. The truth will set you free. I, there's a restaurant. And I'm not going to tell you where this restaurant is. If you write or call, I will not tell you. Unless I know you, I will not call. I will not tell anybody where this restaurant is. But I went to a restaurant the other day. We walk in. There's no sign out front. Some restaurants you go, and there's a big blockade almost. Don't come in here without a mask. Ah! No sign at this restaurant. No sign at all. You walk in. Nobody in the place was wearing a mask. Not even the waiters or waitresses. Not the cooks. Nobody. And there was a policeman having lunch there. <laughs> they were free. Yeah. I felt like we had gone back to America. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like we had gone back to America walking into that place. Yeah. They were free. Yeah. If you know the truth... The truth will set you free. But if you believe the lies, you will continue to be in bondage. We will stay in bondage as long as we keep listening to the lies. As long as we, start, as long as we keep on believing the deceptions. 
We need to know the truth because it is the truth that will set us free. One more time. The Lord hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Know this, that the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel, Fear not, I have redeemed thee. I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, and we are, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, and we are, they will not overflow us. When thou walkest through the fire, and we are, Thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Amen. The Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. Is anything too hard for God? I say, is anything too hard for God? With God, all things shall be possible. That's the truth. That's the truth. That's going to set you free. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. That's true. That's the truth, and it will set us free. Hear me now. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, it says this. God is talking and he says, If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, these things, I believe, are from God. But listen, he says, if I do all this to you because of your sin, it's just because I love you. Listen up. Verse 14, if, if my people, that's why I said earlier, it's not the governors, it's not the president, it's not world leaders, it's not anybody, but God's people that's going to change this. Amen. I believe that. It can't be just anybody. It has to be God's people. If my people, he says, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, just like in the days of the plagues of Egypt, the bondage in Egypt, we cried out to God and he heard us. He heard us. Humble ourselves, pray, seek his face, turn from our wicked ways. Yes, we have wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, he says. And I believe everything he says, everything. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. God's people, it's time to wake up. It's time to start believing him and his word and stop listening to the naysayers. Stop listening to the deceivers. Stop listening to those that are preaching fear. We need to turn to him and follow this prescription to the letter. And we will be out of this mess. I believe it. Do you believe it? Are you encouraged this morning? I hope so. God's word sets us free. Hallelujah. This altar is open for prayer as we sing our closing song. And I want each and every one of us to go to the Lord in prayer and ask him for strength. Ask him for courage and faith because he will give it.